Kedoshim, the name of this week's Parsha means holy ones. The Parsha begins with God telling the Jewish people that you shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. It then gives multiple commandments, including the commandment to honor our parents, to keep Shabbat, to stand before an elder, not to commit idolatry, not to have forbidden sexual relations, not to lie, not to steal, not to profane God's name, and to love your neighbor as yourself. The Parsha concludes. The Parsha concludes in the same way it started, with God telling his people to be holy as he is holy. With the way this Parsha starts and ends, we could conclude that if someone wants to become holy, all they need to do is follow the commandments given in this Torah portion. But transgressing these commandments is already generally looked down upon. Most people don't do these things, at least good people. Does this mean that any ordinary responsible person should be called holy? The list of forbidden sexual relations in, the, in this week's Parsha corresponds to the list in last week's Parsha, Nakarimo. These two Parshas represent two different viewpoints. Nakarimo, it talks about these things as abominations. And in this Parsha, I'm pretty sure it says something like, um, for I'm the Lord makes you holy. Um, in heaven, oh wait, Nakarimo presents a heavenly viewpoint. Yushim represents an earthly viewpoint. In heaven, the angels might look down on humanity and wonder, how could they even think to do such things? But here on earth, reality. We know why God flooded the world and we're aware of the possible evils that can arise. People do lie, and people do steal, and people do disrespect their parents. Um, the heavenly creatures rise above these sins and don't even consider them. Refraining from doing these simple things is what makes someone holy. Environments can change, and suddenly lying and stealing might not sound so bad. What was once trivial can become a great challenge. Sure, we can be higher than these things, but there needs to be a baseline, a specific point you can cross to be holy. Sometimes all that is required of someone to be holy is that they be responsible. In the, Tal in the Talmud, it says, A Gentile came before Shammai and said to him, I wish to convert to Judaism on the condition that you teach me the whole Torah while I stand on one foot. Shammai drove him away to build his measuring rod, which was in his hand. Came for, when he came before Hillel, Hillel said to him, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. This is the entire Torah. The rest is commentary. Go and learn it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Don't lie, don't steal, and don't cheat. Don't hold a grudge and don't stand idly by your brother's blood. Holiness doesn't require much. Like it says in Deuteronomy, for this commandment, which I command you this day, is not concealed from you, is not concealed from you, nor is it far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, "Who will go up to heaven for us and fetch it for us to tell it to us, so that we can fulfill it?" Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, "Who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and fetch it for us to tell it us to us, so that we can fulfill it?" Rather, this thing is very close to you; it is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can fulfill it. And as the Shem says in this week's Karsha, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. It's about so much.